Is the X-Men 97 Rogue action figure a repaint of the Retro Rogue or Juggernaut Wave Rogue? How can you give the X-Men 97 Rogue open palm hands and weapon holding hands? For Kit Bash, which Rogue head swap looks great? For a Marvel Legends vs Marvel Select, will the X-Men 97 Rogue beat the Marvel Select Rogue in terms of the number of accessories? Also, let me know your thoughts and whether you agree with a theory I have for the X-Men 97 season finale involving Rogue, which I will discuss in this review. The most important part of the X-Men 97 Rogue action figure is the head sculpt. Let's take a closer look. It matches how she looks in the animated series X-Men 97. She has a black headband as opposed to having usually a green one. Compared to her look in the X-Men animated series from the 90s, we can see the hair is not that large anymore. The white of her hair is not painted on, it is a separate piece from the brown part of her hair. Not sure if intentional, the photoreal paint print of her face matches a younger Lenore San, the voice actor of Rogue. A total standout are her photoreal eyes and the blush paint on her cheeks and her red lips. Since this figure is based on the X-Men 97 Rogue, you can see that the hair does not have any paint wash. It's two separate plastic. A white plastic glued on top of a brown hair plastic. Her upper torso matches her look in the X-Men 97 series. Her bomber jacket is a separate army green plastic. On her shoulders, Hasbro painted it green so it would be a seamless transition between the shoulders and the upper arm. Hasbro used an old body mold for her lower torso, so you can still recreate the X-Men animated series scene with Apocalypse. Compared to the retro robe which I used to recreate this scene, the color of her plastic is more of a bright yellow and green, which matches her colors in X-Men 97. Hope you check out my old review of the X-Men Retro Apocalypse in my channel. New to this figure, the top of her boots are now molded on to her upper thigh. She has double jointed pinless knees. She comes with a pair of closed fist hands in yellow plastic. Of course, the end of her gloves are a separate piece. Be careful because you can easily lose this yellow wristband-like pieces. The alternate hand she comes with is not a pair. One is the ungloved hand for the right hand and the other hand is grabbing onto the gloves. I always forget when you use the hands without the gloves, you need to remove the yellow wristband-like which represents the end of her gloves. With the events of X-Men 97, Episode 9, Tolerance is Extinction Part 2, do you think Rogue will take the place of Colossus as the new caretaker of Magneto? Let me know in the comments below. The show has unexpected turns such as the death of Gambit, so I wouldn't be surprised if the angry and heartbroken Rogue takes care of a vegetable state magneto. That is assuming episode 10 will continue the adaptation of the comic event Fatal Attractions. I'm Tuggernaut. Comparing Jim Lee costume robe from X-Men 97 Wave 1, Target exclusive X-Men Retro, lastly the X-Men Juggernaut build a figure robe. Let me know in the comments below which robe do you have in your collection. Comparing the X-Men Retro side by side with X-Men 97 Rogue, you can see the costume is very much similar. Big difference is the bomber jacket. You can see the yellow on the shoulder of the Retro Rogue, which Hasbro has now corrected by painting green on the X-Men 97 Rogue. The X symbol is different, wherein it's a reverse of red and black. In terms of the torso, you can see the upper torso, specifically the chest, is noticeably different. The belt 
of the X-Men Retro is very loose compared to the X-Men 97 Rogue. Both belts are a separate piece. The legs are different wherein the brand new one has pinless double jointed knees. The old one has pins and these pieces are loose. The X-Men 97 is updated to have those pieces sculpted on, which is a big upgrade because this one kept on falling down and being out of place. Her lower torso is an old body mold as evident by those triangular sculpt on her legs. You can see those triangular claw mark like sculpt on the Moonstone and the Black Cat which uses the same lower torso. With those differences, the X-Men 97 Rogue is not a repaint of the X-Men Retro. However, X-Men Retro Rogue is a repaint of the Juggernaut View the Figure Wave Rogue from 2016. Comparing the two, you could see the difference in terms of the colors, of course, and the jacket. The yellow of the 2016 is a little bit darker compared to the retro rogue between the three different head sculpt i did notice the retro rogue is slightly larger if you put the faces side by side the green paint of retro rogue and juggernaut with the figure rogue is shiny compared to the x-men 97 wherein it has a flat green color all three Jim Lee based inspired costume rogues has only one head sculpt. It's a bit hard if you want to use the other head sculpt on the other because you don't have an angry facial expression or a smiling facial expression. You have only one facial expression for each figure. I recently got this 2016 Juggernaut Villa Figure Wave Rogue. I was surprised how good the head sculpt really was. The paint done on her face is really good. The reason why I was not interested in this figure is the hair because Rogue usually has that big large fluffy hair. In the comments below, let me know which head sculpt do you prefer. In terms of accessories, each Rogue has a pair of closed fist hands. Good thing Hasbro made sure to add close fist hands which demonstrate one of her mutant powers which is super strength. Next we have are the hands without gloves. Only Juggernaut Wave from 2016 does not have a hand holding glove. So she only comes with 3 hands unlike the other two which comes with 4 hands. When Hasbro creates a figure of the same character they made sure to use a different paint scheme. That is why doing a kit bash is really hard. As you can see, the color of the hand holding the gloves is entirely different from the rest of the 2016 Rogue. Same is true if you switch over the hand to X-Men 97, it is very noticeable. Next, using the hands with gloves from the X-Men Retro Rogue, you can see it's another different shade of yellow. One thing I notice is the hands of Retro Rogue without the gloves is larger compared to the 2016 Rogue. Look at the length of her fingertips. It's longer. It seems to be the wrong type of hands. Though the head of Retro Rogue is large, maybe that's the reason why they use a larger set of hands. Comparing them side by side, you can see the head of Retro Rogue is indeed larger, just slightly, not that much compared to the 2016 Rogue. In case you are wondering whether you can switch over the heads of all the Rogues, you can do so since there is no flesh exposed on any part of her body so you can do that but for the neck of x-men 97 there is some flesh exposed 
so you can see a mismatch in terms of flesh tone but for x-men 97 it is all right because you can't see any flesh the neck on the 2016 rogue body mold is hidden because the neck is shorter for this particular torso upper torso compared to the x-men 97 rogue the neck is a little bit longer so the head sits higher let me know in the comments below do you like this head swap doing a switch of heads for x-men 97 rogue and x-men retro rogue you can see that it would be the same as what we did with the 2016 rogue wherein the head sits high on the x-men 97 rogue exposing the flesh on her neck unlike the x-men retro rogue body mode wherein you can barely see the neck the x-men retro rogue head sculpt is just okay but i prefer the j scott campbell rogue head sculpt which is why i use it in most of my instagram photos hope you check out my instagram at tuggernaut underscore collectibles here she is besides the j scott campbell rogue Hasbro used photoreal tech in making the face sculpts of these figures. Switching the heads over, the X-Men 97 Rogue head sculpt looks alright with the J. Scott Campbell body mold. However, for the J. Scott Campbell Rogue head, the head tilts somewhat forward because of the hair which is pushed by the bummer jacket she would always be somewhat looking down let me know in the comments below which one do you prefer the j scott campbell rogue head on the x-men 97 body or the x-men 97 head scope on the j scott campbell rogue which is somewhat the outback era costume next comparing x-men 97 rogue with the unity squad rogue this is the only Marvel Legends Rogue which comes with two head sculpts. The first head sculpt we have right here is the one where she's somewhat smirking or somewhat a smile. Doing a kit bash, you can see that it will work. For some reason, any head that you put on this Unity Squad Rogue body seems to work well. Since there is no Marvel Legends Rogue in the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants costume as shown in Episode 9, here is a kit bash. This is the closest that we can use as the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants Rogue costume. The second head sculpt for the Unity Squad Rogue is the one wherein she's angry with her teeth out, ready to punch someone like Juggernaut. This is a head sculpt badly needed for other rogues because it's either she's neutral or she's smiling but we rarely get this kind of facial expression here we have the age of apocalypse rogue a little bit cartoon like as well in terms of the design of her head sculpt and her costume which is specific to the art of age of apocalypse doing a kit bash switching over the two head sculpt you can see that the age of apocalypse rogue still works well on the x-men 97 body same is true for the x-men 97 head sculpt on the age of apocalypse rogue body let me know in the comments below will you do this particular kit bash or do you like how the x-men 97 head sculpt fits in the age of apocalypse body mold Doing a Hasbro Marvel Legends versus Diamond Select Toys Marvel Select. Here we have the very tall 7 inch scale rogue. Marvel Select has a brown bomber jacket. Her greens are shiny metallic. She has double jointed elbows with pins but the jacket restricts it. She has double jointed knees with pins. The Marvel Select hair has some paint wash a black or dark wash on the white and the brown part of her hair so is her jacket which has some black wash 
Marvel Select is really good in terms of details. In terms of accessories, here we have both of them with closed fist hands. They both have a right hand without the gloves and the left hand holding the gloves. This brings a total of 4 hands for both X-Men 97 Rogue and Marvel Select Rogue. The tip of the fingers of the gloves for Marvel Select is pointing down unlike Marvel Legends wherein the tip of the gloves is pointing down. Marvel Select comes with open palm hands which gives her a total of 6 hands unlike Marvel Legends which only has 4 hands. For Marvel Legends to have a open palm hand, you can try using the one that comes with the Age of Apocalypse Rogue. Again, the problem with kit bashing Marvel Legends is the shade of color is different. As you can see, the yellow is different compared to the somewhat the light lemon yellow color of X-Men 97. We can also use Dark Star from the Ursa Major Wave wherein she comes with yellow hands because she's wearing yellow gloves but the color does not match as well. Here is a closer look with the Dark Star open palm hand. Do you think this will work even if they are of a different shade of yellow? Do you think it is important to give Rogue a pair of open palm hands? Let me know in the comments below. Another option if you do not have the Dark Star is to use the alternate hands of Storm from the X-Men 60th Anniversary 3-pack. So here we have the open palm hands of Storm. Of course, the expressive hands are different from Dark Star. But you can see the color does somewhat... It, it seems to be the same as Dark Star's. It can blend in with the yellow that Rogue has. It's not a perfect match as you can see closer. From afar, it looks okay. For the weapon holding hands, you would need the other X-Men 60th Anniversary 3-pack which has Psylocke. So using the weapon holding hands of Psylocke, you can give Rogue a weapon holding hand. Here she is with the weapon holding hands from Sila. Unusual that Rogue would need weapon holding hands but sometimes she does pick up stuff like a street lamp post or anything that she can swing against her enemies. So it'd be nice to have a weapon holding hand for Rogue. Here she is holding the sword of Sila and the staff of Gambit. The other alternate hand that Sila comes with is one karate chopping like hand or probably a running gesture type of hand. You can see the color of yellow is different. Now you can use this to slap Gambit. So it can work but it's you have to be far away so you won't notice the difference. To give Rogue and Gambit matching uniforms, you can use the Psylocke body mold. However, in the comic books, in Uncanny X-Men number 275, Rogue did not have a team uniform look because she was in the Savage Land in Uncanny X-Men number 274. Here she is in a team uniform with a kit bash of the X-Men 97 Magneto as Joseph. Rogue comes in the standard X-Men 97 retro card back packaging. Characters from Wave 1 on the top. On the side is Art of Rogue. Amelia Vidal is the lead character designer for X-Men 97. Check out her Instagram. Marvel's Rogue for ages 4 and up. On the back, we have a digital render of the character and the other figures for Wave 1. There is no write up here, so you'll have to check Hasbro Falls for that. The recommended retail price for X Men 97 figures is 24.99 USD. For Australia, the recommended retail price is 45 AUD. The X Men 97 Rogue action figure is 15.2 cm or 5.10 inches tall. 
According to Marvel, she is 5 feet 8 inches tall. Converting the action figure height in 112 scale, this makes her too tall for 112 scale. But Hasbro are 6 inch figures. The big players of Fatal Attraction story as featured in Episode 9 of X-Men 97, Tolerance is Extinction Part 2. Here we have Wolverine and Magneto. Don't mess with the Summers. Here we have Cyclops and Jean Grey, X-Men 97. Continuing the Summers family tree, we have Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen, and Cable. Another family size comparison. Here we have Mystique, the Walgreens exclusive, and the X-Men 97 Nightcrawler. Based on the pages of Uncanny X-Men number 275, here we have Jubilee and Psylocke. 80 years of Marvel, Captain America, and Renew Your Vow, Spider-Man. Rumored to be Taylor Swift in the Deadpool and Wolverine movie, here we have Dazzler and we have Elektra. Speaking of Deadpool and Wolverine, from the Deadpool Legacy Collection, we have Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, and Deadpool. The big bads of X-Men 97, here we have Bastion from the Haslab Sentinel, and Mr. Sinister from the Wendigo Wave. Age of Apocalypse Rogue, and we have Avengers Unity Squad Rogue. Next we have is J. Scott Campbell Rogue and we have the X-Men Retro Rogue. 6 inch scale Rogue from the Juggernaut Vilda Figure Wave and we have 7 inch scale Diamond Select Toys Marvel Select Rogue. Marvel Legends Retro Apocalypse and we have the 7 inch scale Marvel Select Apocalypse. Next we have is Toy Viz Juggernaut and we have the Juggernaut Vilda Figure. 112 scale Mafex Medicom Toy Gambit. 6 inch scale Marvel Legends Uncanny X Men 275 Gambit. For articulation, her head can move from side to side. She cannot look up that much because of her hair. She can look down that far. Her arms can do a full 360 right here. She doesn't come with a bicep swivel or a butterfly joint. She has single jointed elbows. Her wrist can swivel and all her hands can hinge forward and back. She has a upper torso swivel so she can do a full 360 right there on her torso. There's no waist swivel. She can crunch forward that much. She can crunch backward that far. It is seamless. There is no gap between the upper and lower torso. She can do a split. She has a upper thigh swivel right here. She has double jointed pinless knees. She cannot fully kick her back, but she can kick forward that far. She doesn't come with a lower cap swivel. A missed opportunity because they can hide it there. Her feet can hinge forward and back and she has an ankle rocker. My final thoughts. The new X-Men 97 Rogue is a clear upgrade compared to the Retro and Juggernaut Wave Rogue. The body part that was clearly reused from the Moonstone body mold is her lower torso. A helpful change on her legs are the sculpted boots. So far, X-Men 97 has one of the best head sculpts for Rogue in a Jim Lee inspired outfit. I hope Hasbro will give Rogue alternate heads showing an angry or battle-like look in the future. Do you agree with my theory for episode 10, Tolerance is Extinction Part 3? Do you think Rogue will stay with Magneto in Asteroid M? Or will it be Sunspot? Or someone else from the X-Men team will stay? Let me know in the comments below what do you think will happen in the X-Men 97 finale. Please help my reviews get recommended by the YouTube algorithm through your likes, subscription, and comments. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing ringing the notification bell, and checking out other reviews I have on the channel. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and find it useful. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the notification bell.